So welcome back to another video where I do exactly the opposite of what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, so I get kind of tired and just don't feel like messing with this one right now. So I started messing with this one. Um, as I mentioned before, I wanted to clean the vacuum lines and uh, or clean up the, the wiring harness because it's got a couple wires like you see those right here that uh, they're just not the right gauge and they're just kind of thrown there so i want to clean them up put them running through the loom get it looking right and and then i figured that i would do the vacuum lines and now i find myself taking off the throttle body to be able to drill some holes and actually put fittings on them so i have uh, removed the throttle body and cleared the area in the back that took out the bracket for the coil the coil plate and the coil itself all that is over there and i got me a right angle drill so what's going to happen is that i'm going to come in through the back and drill the holes that i need to be able to get the fittings for the different vacuum things that uh i am going to connect in the back of the intake so what i'm getting rid of is the little vacuum block with all the little lines that are so stuck together that you can barely get a line on there or a zip tie to secure them but uh yeah so this is eliminating this which uh, by the way most of it was already uh disconnected um the pcv it's deleted on this car it just uh, it just evacuates through the valve covers uh so one of these was going to the fuel pressure regulator which is what i need to run and another one was feeding the map sensor the other two were dead um and something that whenever they did, whenever they put this car back together, uh, they forgot to run vacuum to the AC system. I just found the line dang dangling on the bottom and then, hold on a second, bam. You can see here, I took that out of my 87 and put it on this one. So this one's the one that splits uh, and the check valve actually. You can also see the check valve on there, but uh, actually two check valves. So you can see the two check valves and then the splitter that feeds the AC and the splitter that feeds the cruise control. Um, there's a line back here that splits. The bottom line goes to the vacuum ball. Top line goes to the vacuum. Um, I mean, to the cruise control. But anyway, so I removed all those parts. Now I have the space so I can drill without removing the intake. Um, if on uh, on most of your on most other cars you're probably gonna have to undo the loom for the wiring harness because it's bolted to the back of the intake and in this case it wasn't so i just gonna pull an old bolt put it on there once i'm done with all of this uh, and pretty much just shove everything in the back get your right angle drill drill the holes whatever you want them to hide your vacuum lines and you don't have to be running those hard lines that most of the time they're either cracked at the at the at the welds for the for the little tabs that hold it to the different bolts because people have tried to force them or they just got snagged i don't know they, they usually get ripped up but anyways so as you can see here uh, i have the temperature sensor the air temperature sensor right here um and then multiple other lines and on this one i tap the fuel pressure regulator to the front which i'm thinking about doing that on this one so i don't have to run a line all the way to the back uh which i'm probably going to do this anyways uh and my i may even remove this uh this nipple out of this one or reuse one of the ones that i removed originally from this one because this one used to have the fittings for the cooling lines around the throttle body so yeah uh mimic this and here's a close-up for the guys that uh are trying to do this at home following this video now the thing with running the fittings this way is that if you're planning on using anything that is a uh, half inch or smaller you can put two fittings next to each other on this bottom one i put a little piece of tube and you can see it here so it extends out like that and then yeah so hold on let me see if i can get you a better shot there it is so you see how I did a little tube just to extend it out and that way I can have a larger fitting on the top uh, with a similar size fitting on the bottom but extend it out so I can actually do the AN lines and everything. This was for my oil catch can if you're wondering. Uh, now, if this is your first time ever doing something like this, you're going to need a tap 
uh, for the fitting that you have. So for example, this one's what, one eighth tag 27 uh, normal pipe thread NPT. And I'm not sure if you can see it on there, but it even tells you the size of drill bit that you need, right? So you get the proper bit. Now, if you're like me and don't have the stubby bits, pretty much the ones that are like that long, uh, you use one of these. So what I have learned over the years is that uh, these usually match um, common sizes for these. So if I were to measure this bit here, right? And I compare it to this, the depth of the cuts actually, so this is actually a lot narrower than the bit is, but the part that we want is the big cross section here. And the reason why I say that we want that part is because what's gonna happen is that whenever we cut the threads over there, it's gonna allow that fitting to sit flush against the intake. Um, it'll still be tight, you'll still have to snag it down to get it to be to be to uh, to bottom out and, and seal but it won't be the the fitting won't be sticking out the back of the intake but anyway uh, and here you go so that's the thickest section of this is the width of that third step and that third step just so happens focus a third step just so happens to be perfect width or the perfect thickness or the shank seems to, uh, is the right length that allows it to drill the hole that I need for the wall of the intake. tip right here uh, the Spermatex aviation forma gasket so you go ahead and apply this on your fittings like so and just let it dry for a little bit and pretty much is like really nice pipe dope that actually kind of hardens um, it doesn't gall the aluminum or I haven't had it gall the aluminum yet but uh, it's worked very well on, on that engine, or well, the engine that used to be in this one. Um, it was particularly helpful when I was doing the fitting on top of the turbo, because uh, my TE45 always had an issue where it had like the smallest leak. It barely got the surface wet, but over time, it would get all oily looking. It wouldn't actually drip, it would just look oily. And what I ended up doing was uh, taking out the fitting, putting this on the threads, uh, making sure that I didn't get it in the fitting. As you can see here, you could have just get it on the threads and then you can clean that off if you want to. But uh, yeah, so then you thread it in and voila, no more leak. And again, it's worked very well. And there's your pro tip. Installed the fittings, and as you can see here, I have one blocked off. One's going to my map, and uh, you can actually see the fitting there right behind it. 
And then this other one's gonna go to my cruise control and AC line. So the one that I plug is gonna be for a future expansion per se. That way I don't have to go through all of this again. I can just remove the coil, get in there with the 716, stake out that plug, put whatever fitting I need. If I wanna feed a, a vacuum block, I don't have to drill another, I don't have to remove anything and drill another hole. I just put the fittings in there and run my vacuum block to whatever I want. Um, and also the methanol signal could come off of that unless I go with one of those snow kits that uses the signal from the map and that way I have one map, two signals coming out of it. I don't know. But anyway, I continue putting everything on and spare you the whole assembly section and go from there. back together I already connected the the map sensor the fuel pressure regulator and the cruise control slash AC check valve contraption there uh, and now I'm just touching up this wiring over here um, it had like this really heavy gauge wire on there for the air temperature sensor so cut that off and now I'm gonna replace it with an appropriately sized um wire I didn't, didn't really have to do it just i felt the need to do it um the wire is long enough that i'll be able to stick in the loom now and run it through the intake and yeah so they can connect back where it was but yeah other than that uh, i'm wrapping it up for tonight hope you guys enjoyed please subscribe hit the like button